here. Well, we've got an interesting subject that we want to just touch on um, because, you know, there's a, there's a number of people who, pertaining to their relationship, and before we get started, Father, we thank you. And we ask for your presence, your blessing, and just the, the impartation of life to our hearts. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a demonstration of exactly what we're talking about on today's broadcast. And it has to do with the reality that um, can I have, can we have continuous, <laughs> continuous fellowship with Jesus Christ on a continuous basis? Can that become the new norm? And... Uh, so that was that was from this morning's text devotional. The new normal is continuous communion with Jesus Christ, and and this is what we want to find out. <clears throat> now, some of you may know or are familiar with uh, Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence was uh, was a uh, ancient uh, monk. He was a man of God, and he he worked in the monastery in the kitchen, and he did something uh, pertaining to what became a book, a very, very famous book called Practicing the Presence of God, Brother Lawrence. You can look it up, you can Google it. It's, it's a great read. I think I read it maybe about 35, 40 years ago. But this is what he says pertaining to our subject. He says, there is not in the world a kind of life more sweet and delightful than that of a continual conversation with God. And those only can comprehend it who practice and experience it. I just uh, yesterday watched a very good documentary on the life of Samuel Morris. Samuel Morris, the, the African missionary to America. And uh, quite a story, and I didn't know about it until I went to Bible school. Pastor Stevens mentioned him on a number of occasions because he had this prayer relationship where he called God Father and anything that had to do with anything anything that had to do with anything it was like I'm going to speak to my father and uh, it's a great story true story God used this African young man in a great way to turn around and bring revival to a uh, Midwestern <laughs> town Imagine that in America, the Midwestern town, Taylor University, um, was revived by this one young man. Well, what was the what was the interesting thing, is that he continuously had this conversation with God. And so, if we were to think of this, conversation is is a two way street. You know, many times people think of prayer. They think I I'm, I am going to talk to God. And, uh, and that's good, that's, that's fine. But you know what? I find it like when I go to prayer, I am wanting to listen to God. I want to, there's something that, I know he wants to say something to me. I know that if I get still and quiet, I will hear what I need to hear. And we are in the 20th, yeah, childlike, we are like in the 21st century, and we have, we have sliced and diced our days to the extent that we have so what we call what we call so little time to be still to be quiet what if somebody were to say like Martin Luther Martin Luther was quoted as saying this he says I'm so busy today I have to spend an extra hour in prayer that seems to be so contra you know contraproductive you got so much to do you need to get going the, this is the mindset that we hear and we run into Whereas he is saying, yes, there's so much to do. I need to get before God. I need to hear. And now, you know how this works out? Because all of us have, you know, busy schedules. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're not talking about becoming passive or, or lazy or unfocused. But here's the thing. There is, there is, of the many things that I must do that I'm responsible for doing, I really need to know not what to do, but I need to know what to do first. 
what is the most important thing that I could be involved with right now? And certainly in the beginning of my day, that first thing most important is that I'm before God, I'm in His Word, I am listening to the Holy Spirit, because that will then set the pace for the rest of my day. And then like Brother Lawrence here, who's saying that there's no life more sweet and delightful. Now, that doesn't mean that everything in my day is going to go smooth, but everything in my day will have God's presence. I will have a continual communion. If I think this way, so what does that mean? It means that I am spiritual by reason of God the Holy Spirit living inside of me. You are spiritual by reason of the second birth. And it's not what we do that makes us spiritual, it's the life that we have no matter what we do that gives spirituality its opportunity to be revealed. So God would have it that we could share His nature and his character, like it says in Philippians 2, let this mind or this way of thinking be in you. Let it be in you. That That's a volitional decision. And that's like making room for God. So in Genesis 35 and verse 3, there's a great portion that uh, Jacob uh, says, and and he, and he kind of gets his household together. Now, listen to this very carefully. And there's some, there's some very, very uh, substantive meanings that are found in this verse. And it says in verse 2, he says, uh, Jacob says to his household, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. Three things he mentions in this verse. Put away strange gods. Well, what are strange gods? Well, they're not gods at all. But they are tyrants, they are dictators, they are circumstances that are like hammering away at our life, you know. And, 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 and do I know, answer this question if you can, do you know the difference between that which is urgent versus that which is necessary? Because the urgent comes in and it's got a big voice. It's got to like, you know, it's in your face. <laughs> <laughs> in your face now this is very urgent but it may not be necessary or at least maybe not at that moment and it's not that we're irresponsible but we are learning and we were talking about this a little bit earlier just before the wrap responsibility responsibility and you know people human beings we don't like responsibility that means that we are accountable and that's a good thing but you know what I mean uh, somebody could say, well, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm real busy, Pastor. I mean, I, I'd like to help out. But, but what we're saying is that I don't want to take on any more responsibility. But this is how we should think about responsibility through the Spirit and through the Word and through truth. Response to His ability. What does the Bible say? Faithful is He who has called you who will what? also do it. That's correct. <laughs> I didn't hear you, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And he who has begun a good work in you shall do what? Complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. See, we have this assurance of God's presence. And this is what I want to focus in on. So first and foremost, Joseph says, uh, Jacob rather says, put away these, these, these gods of the urgency. Because they're not gods at all. Just because they're loud, just because they're boisterous, just because they may have emotional energy, I need to know how to deal with those. Second thing he says, and make and be clean. Be clean. Well, that, this this is not talking about being religiously clean. Um, this is talking about. Uh, it's an interesting word in the Hebrew, because it speaks of uh, of uh, purity. Purity meaning unmixed. So he's saying like, I can't think of five things at the same time. Can you? <laughs> I mean, you, you, if, you, if, you, if you think that you are, I think it's, it's the fact that you're confused or schizophrenic. <laughs> you got, you know, two, two conflicting things. By the, way, by the way, that's called cognitive dissidence. Cognitive dissidence is when you've got two opposing viewpoints trying to occupy your mind at the same time. It's what, you know, James talks about 
you know, a double-minded man is what? He's unstable. He, 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 can't, he can't make a decision. He doesn't want any more responsibility because he's, he's the one that's trying to respond out of his own ability rather than God's ability. So notice, please, so be clean. And then the third thing, it says change your garments. Change your garments. This is a beautiful illustration because when the priests were to go in before the Lord, they had to wear linen. And linen spoke of no sweat, literally, no sweat. Linen had, had beautiful ventilation. It was a cool garment. It was a relaxing garment. When they were in the presence of God, serving God, it was, it was a very cool thing to do, if I could put it quite frankly. It was something that was wonderful. It didn't demand the energy of the flesh because the flesh can't serve God. It didn't demand an emotional workup because the emotions are a responder, never an initiator. Our emotions are going to respond. And if I have made myself pure, isolated, cleaned out uh, these, these false gods, and given the Lord Jesus Christ first place, then I can have a very relaxed mental attitude. It's what the psalmist said through David in Psalm 16, 8. I set the Lord before my face. I, I set him before. So I'm facing God. He's facing me. We're having what? Conversation. We're like what Brother Lawrence says. We have this continuous communion, and it's a life, <laughs> life so sweet. Why? I probably, more than likely, I need to be healed from self-inflicted wounds, circumstantial wounds, and wounds coming from other human beings. I don't think you can imagine yourself, but I mean, if you've been on the planet long enough, you know people have, they have the capacity to wound you. They have the capacity to hurt you. And what are you gonna do with that? Are you gonna withdraw? Are you gonna, are you gonna isolate yourself? Are you gonna complain? Are you going to talk? Or can you have a communion with God and have a, and draw near, as he would say, draw near to me, I will draw near to you, saith the Lord, my God. But then Joseph, I keep calling him Joseph, it is Jacob. Jacob goes up and he says this, let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. See, what is he reflecting on? He's reflecting on the fact that the last time that he was in a tizzy, when he was confused, when, when uh, you know, his world was turned upside down, that's, he cried out to God and God answered him. So I want you to think that in the crisis, we can have conversation, but it needs to be the right conversation. I'm not to have self-conversation in a crisis, but I can have Christ conversation. So he says, let us go up to Bethel and I'll make an altar there. What is an altar? It is a place of sacrifice. It is a place of offering. It is a place of giving and then expecting to receive. This is so beautiful. When uh, in Genesis 22, when Abram took Isaac and they both went up Mount Moriah to do what? to offer sacrifice. He says, he says to the servants, you stay here while, you know, uh, we're going to go up and we're going to worship God. Well, they got to the top and uh, Isaac kind of looked around. And he said, I see the wood, I see the fire, but Father, where is the sacrifice? And Abram said this, he said, the Lord, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And you know what? There's good message on that. Not a necessary play on words, but God did offer himself as the sacrifice once and for all in Hebrews 10.10 10 and 10.19. That, that amazing uh, finished work, glorious gospel offering Jesus Christ made. But notice please that he said, you know, let's go and make an altar to the God who answered me in my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And this is what I want us to see. God with us. Hey, Michelle, thanks for joining. Get the replay. Uh, we're, we're just about wrapping this up. But um, amazing, God, God being with us. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are you born again? 
did the Holy Spirit come in to visit you? Or is he making his residence inside of you? Are you Ephesians 1, 13 and 4, 30 sealed, sealed unto the day of redemption by means of the Holy Spirit? Then that means that God, the third person of the Trinity, God is inside of you, residing, living. Now, yes, we can quench, we can grieve, okay? But the critical thing is that he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. He is there in our distress that's when we can call and build the altar in our time of distress. But we don't live in distress. We offer um, the sacrifice of praise. And why is that so amazing? Well, it means then I, I, you know, I roll the care of my concerns on God. And then you know how I finish it up? <laughs> I'm thankful that I've got a God who, who hears and answers prayer. That's, that's the beautiful thing. So Jacob... I got it right this time. Jacob says, let's go up to the house of God. And I love this. Bethel. That's what that's what it is. Um, house, Beth, El, God, the house of God. You know, and that could mean that could mean a local assembly. That could mean the body of Christ. That could mean wherever two or more are gathered together. It's where I'm going to hear and have fellowship in the reality of truth that comes from God because it's coming now through God's people or God's pulpit and God's word. And that's what we need to have and what we need to hear. So it's amazing that we can have communion, continuous communion. And when I understand, and I can, I can understand it when I grieve, uh, the Holy Spirit because he's a person and he, he is sensitive. When I grieve the Holy Spirit, the only thing that's left for me to do is to rebound. First John 1, 9 and confess, say the same thing that God says and, and be restored. I like what Galatians 6, 1 talks about in terms of those who are spirit filled uh, are to go to those ones, the brother who's found in a fault. Well, you know, fault is maybe not a big thing, but it's a real thing. Fault might be, I just miss it. I just miss the mark. I'm after the right thing, but I don't get it. And uh, But the purpose of going is not to criticize, judge, or malign. It is to restore, to restore that which has missed back into fellowship. And so rebound becomes an amazing provision to get right back into communion and to continue in this life, as Brother Lawrence put it, more sweet and delightful, and those only can comprehend it who practice and experience it. So don't don't uh, neglect the practice. The practice of it is just entering into it. The practice of it is just experiencing. So I let this mind, I let the thinking of God come in. I've got details. I've got responsibilities, but I also have a God. God is with me. And then I want to close with this, and this is so good because, of course, it's the Bible. That's why it's so good. <laughs> and uh, uh, what uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17 says this, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still. Two things. Set yourself. Be in the right position. Our position is in Christ Jesus. Our position is that we are seated above in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But then he says this, uh, stand still. Don't get off point. Don't be moving around. Don't be going back and forth, back and forth. Get still. Get still. Okay? And then he says, and then see, you'll see the salvation of the Lord. You'll see the salvation of the Lord with you. With you. God with you. That is amazing. Because he's not visiting. He's not on a vacation. He hasn't gone away. He is with us. And that is like the grace of God. In the situation, we build the altar that ends up with thanksgiving because we have audience with God. And we have this continual we have a new normal. A new normal is like, the new normal is like, I'm out of fellowship, not so often. Not so often. I'm not out of fellowship, not so often. And I have this continuous communion with Jesus Christ through the Word of God. And it's amazing that we can live this way as the new norm. I almost thought I saw Scott chatting.
Pray that God will keep me still, constant, restless, and can't sleep at night. Yes, absolutely, Renee. And uh, that's important. Receive that in Jesus' name. Okay, well, thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll be broadcasting tomorrow, Thursday. I got a special, <laughs> I got a special broadcast for you guys tomorrow. We're gonna be, we're gonna be with the moms, the young mothers in Greater Grace uh, Church, and we're gonna be sharing a word with them. And you're invited because it's at, it's, it's at the time in which they, that they meet. So we will be uh, in a different location, but 10:30 we'll start the broadcast. Until then, God bless you. Grace Cafe is where you can find us. Let your friends know that they can tune in and get a shot of grace during their day. In Jesus' name, amen.